invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. A year ago, when Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventures. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, is a many interesting things here in America. And one of the most interesting is the newspaper. Newspaper in America is a place where they got lots of big advertisements and a little pieces of a news are stuck in between. <laughs> Newspaper here is coming at three sizes. A small, medium, and the Sunday size, which is used to hold up a short leg of a table. <laughs> I remember, Mamma Mia, when I'm first to come to America, I'm a look around. But it's hard to see the people's faces. Everybody is reading a newspaper. First time I think is a wonderful thing how American people, they all interested in the news. I'm wondering, what the Canada be so interested in? Situation in Russia? What's happened in China? United Nations Conference? Then I'm going to find out is there something even bigger than that? Dick Tracy. <laughs> Mamma mia, over here it seems like everybody is read what they call the funnies. So I'm a read the funnies too. And what they see? Man is a fall into a sewer and he's a drown. <laughs> Old lady is a pushed into a cement mixer. <laughs> Little girl is a look for her uncle who got killed in Africa ten years ago. <laughs> Mamma mia, things of which in America they put in the funnies. In Italy, we put in the obituary column. <laughs> anyway, I'm a real American, and I read the newspaper every day. But it's a funny thing. Paper I'm a buy is a never change of headline. No matter how the weather is, nice or bad, cloudy, snow, rain, on the top of my paper is always a set of same thing. Chicago Sun. <laughs> And right now, I can use a plenty sun because I'm a catch a little cold. Maybe I should have go to sleep early and take a milk and a honey like you used to give me, Mama. But I'm in a love with my night school class. So much I'm in a love that I hate to miss even one lesson, so I'm going to go right to now. <laughs> All right, all right, class, all right, attention. I'll call the roll now. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Horowitz? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? Mr. Schultz, are you here? Peekaboo. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, sit up in your seat. I see you. Oh, Mr. Basco. Uh, yes, sir, Mrs. Spalding. Do you remember about three weeks ago, I asked you to speak to the Boy Scout troop in this neighborhood about the differences in health conditions in Italy and America? Yes, I remember. Well, the meeting has been set for 7 o'clock tomorrow night, and they'll be expecting you then. Well, I I'm going to be very glad to give that speech, Miss Spalding, except for one thing. What's that? I'm a got a cold. Oh, John Luigi, you, you look to me like you have a 108-degree fever. It don't look so hot to me. <laughs> Tabasco, I think you look all right. What makes you think you have a cold? Well, I'm, I'm not to feel it too good, and I'm a got a sniffle. Uh-huh, something's wrong with Luigi's sniffler. <laughs> hey, hey, Luigi, maybe you have pneumonia. I don't know, Olsen. I've never been sick before. Oh, then Luigi couldn't have it. Before you can have pneumonia, you've got to have old pneumonia. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, oh. please, oh, oh. please. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Basco, I'm sure it's nothing serious. You'll be able to speak to the Boy Scouts tomorrow night. Are you doing anything for the cold? Well, I'm going to try to cure it with all the remedy that my Uncle Pietro has shown me in Italy. 
I'm a filler stockinger with a hot salt. Hot salt? Yes, and I'm a wave it around and around and around in my head for a half hour. Did you get any better? No worse. I got a sore arm. <laughs> And the last tonight, I'm going to try another Uncle Pietro remedy. I'm going to go to sleep with a garlic of bread under my pillow. What happened? This morning, nobody's talked to me. <laughs> Please, Miss Spaulding, what I can do to take care of my cold? Huh? Well, I'm sure those old-fashioned remedies won't help. But you should do something right away. A cold should be nipped in the bud. That's right, Louise. Listen to Miss Spaulding. The best thing for a cold is a little nip. <laughs> that is not what I meant, Mr. Schultz. Now, Mr. Basco, when you give your health talk tomorrow, you should use yourself as an example. Really, you can't cure a cold with old-fashioned methods. And modern medicine teaches us that very often, when we get a cold, the best thing to do is to go out and get a shot. Get a shot? <laughs> Mrs. Spalding, nobody's going to shoot to me. <laughs> No, Mr. Basco. I meant a shot of penicillin. Oh. Your doctor will give it to you if you need it. Uh-huh. Now, just get a good night's sleep. And I'm sure by tomorrow night you'll be in fine shape for your speech. Thank you, Miss Spalding. I'm going to be there tomorrow night. Luigi, I got a good remedy for you. You mix six quarts of hot water with a pound Epsom salts. Your remedy your, isn't bad, Luigi. Soak your feet in it tonight. Soak your feet? My goodness! Well, what's the matter, Schultz? Last time I had a cold, I drank it. <laughs> I'm going to try you. And I have a shot. Oh, listen to me. I'm like a little baby. My breath is coming in short pants. Schultz. <laughs> Schultz, I'm going to feel a little worried about the going to a doctor. If I'm going to go see a doctor, he's going to jump out of me with a needle. <laughs> Luigi, smile. Don't be a coward. Like we say in the delicatessen business, a coward dies a thousand times, but a brave man... Eat last week's potato salad. Schultz. <laughs> Schultz, I, I'm not can understand the why I catch you this call. All the day long, I'm a sit in the house. I'm a never go on the street. Aha, that's your trouble. No fresh air. You gotta have fresh air, Luigi. Oh. Look at my cousin, Wolfgang. No, for a year, he was in the street, day or night, plenty of fresh air. Never had a cold. Always walking around in the street, winter and summer. How is he now, Schultz? Well, I ain't seen him, Luigi. Last week, he found an apartment. <laughs> A sneaky one, huh, Louis? <laughs> so it's, it's a look like I'm not going to be able to make it at a speech tomorrow. Oh, Mr. Basco, hello, Mr. Schultz. Oh, hello, Sandy. Hello, Sandy. How's your mom? Oh, she's feeling much better, Mr. Basco. Good. You won't have to take me to the movies again this Saturday. Oh, that's too bad. I'm ahead to miss the Superman episode. Mr. Basco, I'm going to see you tomorrow when you give your speech. Oh, are you a little boy scout, Sandy? I'm a big boy scout. Tomorrow night at the meeting, they're going to make me a tenderfoot. Tenderfoot? <laughs> Luigi, don't you understand? He's talking about his initiation. That's right, Mr. Schultz. Sure, tomorrow night he's a tenderfoot. They make him wear tight shoes. Gesundheit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Gesundheit. Uh, Schultz, so here's a speck of finer German. <laughs> Well, the height is good, but the gesund is a little schwach. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Basco, have you got a cold? No, oh, oh, I'm fine, Sandy. I, I'm always a sneezer when there's a bigger wind than a straight. I'm all right. <laughs> That's right. One good blow deserves another. <laughs> well, Mr. Basco, I hope you can make that speech tomorrow night. If you don't come, the meeting will be off, and I won't become a tenor foot for another month. Oh, is that a song? Well, uh, don't worry, Sandy. I'm uh, going to be there. Oh, that's well, Mr. Basco. Well, goodbye. Well, goodbye, Sandy. And I'll be sure to give my regards to your mama, huh? Schultz, 
Now I'm a gotta get the fella. What am I gonna do? Well, you ought to go see a doctor. Oh, I wish I could recommend you to my doctor. Why can't you? This week he's sick. <laughs> Where am I going to find a doctor? I'm going to never have a doctor in America. But, Luigi, go to a hospital. They cure everybody. The place is full of good doctors. Oh, no, Schultz, I don't go there. Why not? If the doctors are so good, why is the hospital always full of sicker people? Go back. <laughs> My friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Pasquale. What's the matter, Luigi? You're looking bad. Like you got a one hand in the grave. <laughs> Pasquale, it's a long story. I'm going to have a call, and I'm going to say I'm going to be ready for speech tomorrow night. So I should go out and I get a shot. Schultz says the doctor's are sick, and he's sending me to the hospital, but I don't go, I go home. Oh, she'll go to everybody but your best friend, Pasquale, who's bringing you here from the old country. And what's happened? Nothing. Why are you running around like a crazy plumber looking for a leak in the faucet when all the time you could come straight to the drip? <laughs> You're so right, Pasquale. Nobody's a bigger dripper than you. <laughs> It's a funny thing. When I'm saying it, it sounds different. <laughs> oh, Luigi, that's a sound bad. Trouble with you is you're living too much alone. You need somebody to take care of you. Somebody who's going to feed you, bring you a pipe, or put a slippers on your feet, and when you go to sleep, it tuck you in and give you a good night of kiss. Pasquale, you going to do all of this for me? No. <laughs> my daughter, Rosa, if you was married to my Rosa, you wouldn't be sick now. Pasquale, I'm not going to marry your Rosa. She's too fat for me. No, wait, you call it 250 pounds of fat. Pasquale, you call it 250 pounds of skinny? You see, even you ain't sure. <laughs> Please, Pasquale, I'm not going to... What's the matter with you? You look bad. Oh, Luigi, look, it's no time for you to refuse the help. You look like you're heading for the last around the house. <laughs> Pasquale. Tell. Well, I'm a got experience in such things. Luigi, you got arthritis. <laughs> Pasquale, is that a bad? Terrible. Come here, look through the window. You see those signs are three blocks away? Read them to me. Squally, I can already do the sign. Aha. Just like I'm a thought. Sign is the trouble. <laughs> Luigi, answer the telephone. Squally, what are you talking about? I'm not to hear no ring. Oh, Luigi, you is. Is the ring and it's so loud? I'm going to take it to the telephone. Mama, dear. Come here, Luigi. I'm going to put this at the mama in your mouth to see how much fever you got. But the person... Close your mouth. Don't talk. Don't worry, Luigi. I'm going to take care of you. It's a special medicine for people who suffer so much. Suffer tires all. <laughs> I'm going to send a rose. She's going to get it for you. Mm -mm. No, no, don't talk. Mm. Keep your mouth closed. Your blood is going to rush into your head. That's a high blood pressure. <laughs> Some people have got a blood in the feet. That's a low blood pressure. <laughs> so you just sit there quiet to keep your blood in the middle where it's going to be nice and happy. <laughs> all right, all right. And now I'm going to look at the thermometer. Let me see you. <gasps> Luigi, I got a bad news. You burning up. Pasquale, how much your fever I got? 99. <laughs> Is that the bad? Terrible. One more point and you die. <laughs> Life with Luigi continues in just a moment, but first... And now for the second act of Luigi Basco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. So, Mamma Mia, today I'm supposed to make the speech. 
on the difference between a health in Italy and in America. And uh, today I'm as sick as a dog. I don't want to disappoint American Boy Scouts, and I want to make sure a little Sandy's foot is going to be tender. <laughs> so I try very hard to get the better. Pasquale, he's a giving me lots of advice, but I'm a think is no help. He says, I got a cold, and I'm going to bring it down to the fever. So now I'm a sitting on a cake of ice by the open window <laughs> with an electric fan blowing into my face. This is a supposed to bring my temperature down to normal, 50 degrees. <laughs> Pasquale has come in here a little while ago, and he says, I'm a look fine, and my face is full of color. But, Mamma me, I'm a little worried. The color is a blue. <laughs> I think it's getting too cold for me now, so even though it's going to make Pasquale angry, I'm going to put on some underwear. <laughs> Anyway, Luigi. Hello, Schultz. Luigi, you silly. What are you doing? Get off the cake of ice. Turn off that fan, close the window, and put on some clothes. You look like a frozen poopsicle. <laughs> Schultz, Pasquale is telling me if I do this, I'm going to get better. Oh, that scheming, Pasquale. He'll do anything to make you sick so that Rosa can take care of you. Now I bet you're going to catch virus eggs. Huh? <laughs> virus eggs? What's that, Schultz? Well, everybody's catching that, Luigi. That's a mysterious sickness. Oh. The doctors don't know where it comes from. Uh -huh. They think maybe it's a germ. Oh. They are testing guinea pigs, rabbits, mouses. <laughs> but I think I know where virus eggs come from. You do? It's simple. Virus eggs come from virus chickens. <laughs> I'm trying to cheer you up. <laughs> Luigi, didn't you go to the hospital like I told you? No, sure, sir. I was afraid. Oh, stop that talk, Luigi. You're going to make that speech tonight. You're going to get to a doctor. But, sure, sir, I'm afraid to get a shot. Oh, Luigi, don't be a dumb cop. Now, come. We look in the paper for a doctor. All right, sir. All right. There are no doctors here. Ah, here's something. Hickok suspenders. Luigi, that wouldn't cure your cold, but when you are feeling low, it'll hold you up. Schultz, <laughs> <laughs> is there no doctor advertising the paper? Well, let me see. Let me see. Well, here's, here's the sports page. Uh -huh. No, wouldn't be nothing there. Ha ha, here's something, Luigi. Oh. In case of emergency, call Dr. T.V. Jones. Schultz, so let me see. Ah. Dr. T.V. Jones. Vetter in area. <laughs> Schultz, what's this mean, a veterinarian? That's a doctor what treats veterans. <laughs> he must have a lot of experience. You got to see him right now, huh? But, Schultz, I'm afraid of what the doctor is going to do to me. All right, all right. I got an idea. Now, you go to Dr. Jones, uh -huh. make him believe you're asking for somebody else. Then if you find that you're not afraid, tell him you are the patient. That's fine, Schultz. Uh -huh. I'm going to go right to now. Sign says, Dr. T.V. Jones, a vet. Well, he's a funny kind of doctor with a horse on a sign. <laughs> I guess he wants to show he's a nice man and he's a love animal. <laughs> well, I'm going to go right in and I'll do like Schultz says. I want to say I'm the patient. I'll say he's somebody else. Uh, Dr. Jones? Yes, come right in, please. Uh, doctor, I'm coming to see you about somebody who's very close to me. Oh, I know just how you feel. He probably pulls your wagon every day. <laughs> what? Tell me, uh, this patient, is it a filly? No, is it not from a filly? Is it from a Chicago? <laughs> you don't understand. Is it a colt? Oh, you smart as the doctor. Sure, he's got a cold, all right. Very by the cold. Well, uh, what makes you think he has a cold? Well, uh, doctor, his uh, feet, they feel shaky. All four? No, just the two. <laughs> mm, well, that's odd. This is a rather unusual case. 
How's he taking his food? Oh, his appetite is good. Huh? Has he been eating his hay? Hay? <laughs> He's never eat the hay. Uh, oats? He's never eat oats. Well, that's strange. What does he have for breakfast? Orange juice, two soft boiled eggs, and a cup of coffee. Soft boiled eggs? <laughs> How does he eat them? With a spoon? <laughs> this I gotta see for myself. Where is the patient? Where's the doctor? Before you treat the patient, you tell me what are you gonna do to cure him. But the ordinary procedure. First, we get him warmed up. How you do this? We run him around a mile track three or four times. <laughs> And you'll be happy to know we never use a whip. I'm uh, happy to know that. <laughs> then we wash him with a hose and rub him down with three or four gallons of liniment. Three or four gallons? Yeah, sometimes they don't like it, so we have a couple of heavy men sit on them to hold them down. <laughs> of course, when they try to run out, we hold on to them by the tail. By the tail? <laughs> of course, this treatment's used only for colds. If we find they have a broken leg, we shoot them. Mamma mia, what the kind of patients do you got? Only the finest. Why, I had one frisky fellow in here three months, really in bad shape. I gave him the treatment I just outlined to you. And what's the happen? Last week he came in first at Santa Anita. <laughs> I'm really proud of that little fella. A little fella? Yeah, just a two-year-old. <laughs> He was a wreck when I first saw him. Then I gave him some of my own specially prepared medicine. Now, just take a look at his picture on my desk here and see the tremendous change. <gasps> Mamma mia, now he's a horse. <laughs> and I guarantee all my patients will look exactly like that when I get through with them. <laughs> so what do you think? I'll go buy a doctor. <laughs> Well, Luigi, that's the most stupid story I ever heard. Just when I'm a start of thinking you got a some sense, always you make a liar out of me. Come here. I put a saddle out of you, my little citation. <laughs> well, Squally, don't make fun of me. I know it's all of my fault. And listen to you, even got a horse in your throat. Please, Pasquale, don't mention that word, a horse. Well, I'm gonna leave it now for that Boy Scout meeting. Now you're not moving till I'm gonna take your temperature. Pasqu Just keep your mouth closed, that's all. Hello, Mr. Pasquale. Hello, Mr. Basco. I was looking for you. I thought maybe we'd go to the meeting together. Please, little boy, can't you see I'm taking his temperature? Now, let me see what it's to say. Mmm, 103 degrees. Luigi, you sure you ain't dead? <laughs> no, just a little warm. Hello, Sandy. Come on, we go to the meeting. You staying right ahead. No, Pasquale, I promise you, Sandy, I'm not going to disappoint the Boy Scouts. So come on, Sandy. All right, wait, Luigi, I'll go with you. You might be talking and a faint, so I'm going to be there to hold you up. Thank you, Pasquale. You're a real friend. <laughs> So, I'm finishing my speech to you, nice Boy Scouts, by telling you to watch your health and take advantage of all of the wonderful new discoveries in the medicine you got in America. If you're sick and you got to get a shot, don't be afraid. Take it. Of course, if you got a broken leg or something else, then they got to shoot you. <laughs> No, 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 I make, I make a mistake. Uh, that's a horse of... I mean, that's the people of a different color. <laughs> people, I'm getting all mixed up. I'm a finish, so thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Basco, for your inspirational talk. As Scoutmaster of Troop Number 49, may I say it's, uh, it's something we'll always remember. And now, refreshments, everybody. Come on, Luigi. Hey, Luigi, you make a pretty good speech. You surprised me. Thank you, Pasquale. Don't be afraid to take a shot, eh? How's it going to look if I'm going to stand up and tell everybody that you're sick and you're afraid to take a shot of yourself, eh? You're going to be the laughing stock with these Boy Scouts. Oh, please, please, Pasquale, don't tell her. 
I'd do anything. It's... Anything, Luigi? Pasquale, don't make me marry Russia. <laughs> All right, my little man. I won't ask you to marry Rosa. Thank you, Pasquale. Just to get engaged. <laughs> For five minutes. But, Pasquale, what if it's not to work out? Then I'm going to tell the Boy Scouts. They may be laughing at you for the rest of your life. <laughs> well, little man, what do you say? Well, uh, I don't know. All right, all right, Pasquale. I go back to the restaurant with you. It's not necessary. My little baby, she's been waiting for you right in the back all the time. Rosa! 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 You call me Papa! <laughs> Come here, Rosa. Say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. <laughs> well, Rosa, don't just stand there. Your new bridegroom is the one to hear your voice. Say something as soft and as sweet to Luigi. <laughs> Marshmallow! <laughs> Attention, Scott. Attention. Uh, I just learned something from our fellow trooper, Sandy. It's his first good deed as a new tenderfoot, and he's told us something we should all know. It seems Mr. Basco kept his promise tonight by coming here and addressing us in spite of a great handicap. He spoke to us with 103 degrees fever. Now that's a lesson in courage. Two, four, six, eight. Go to we appreciate Mr. Mr. Basco. Mr. Basco. Mr. Basco. Mr. Basco. Mr. Basco. Pasquale, before you make me feel very bad, now you see I'm going to do a good thing about coming here. Well, I'm never going into your store, and I'm never going to see Rosa again. Uh, Mr. Basco, I want to thank you for coming here. I, I know that you're anxious to return home and get well, and our troop wants to help you. We have a volunteer who will act in the capacity of a nurse in true scout tradition until you return to health. Oh, thank you, Mr. Scout the Master. Is it going to be you? No. You, Sandy? No. Then which one of you is it going to be? Mr. Pasquale's daughter, Rosa. <laughs> Mama, Mama, back to the horses again. <laughs> And so, Mamma Mia, it's to take a speech and a little Boy Scouts to teach me more about the health than I'm ever know before. Also, I'm a learner from Boy Scouts to be brave. But the Mamma Mia, right now, is a doctor here in my room. And uh, yes, Mamma Mia, your son of Luigi is uh, going to get his uh, first uh, shot. Mamma Mia, I just uh, got it and I don't know how to it. Oh, of course, I'm not going to be able to sit down for a while. <laughs> but that's so much better than to be sick. Well, it's getting late now. So like the little Fisk boy say, it's a time to retire. So I'm going to say good night to Mamma Mia. Your loving son, Luigi Bosco, honorary boy scout, group 49, the little immigrant. at the same time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff, Lou Derman, and Cy Howard and stars Jay Carroll Nash as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as the Music under the direction of Lynn Murray, Bob Fields and Stegen.